Hello, I'm Robert Knowles. And I'm Richard Simpson. Today we're going to discuss Mussolini, Part 3. And we're going to go from 1929 to 1940, when Ita Italy joined World War II. But let's go back to Mussolini's goals for his, his view of the world, to rebuild a Roman Empire. And at that time, Italy did have territory in Africa in two places, Somaliland and, more importantly, Libya. Before Mussolini, became, before Mussolini came to power in 1919, the Italian government had started making progress towards creating a situation where Libyan citizens were going to be equal with Italians. They started allowing education in Arabic and in Berber, which were the two major languages in Libya. They even hinted at Libyans becoming Italian citizens. However, as soon as Mussolini got into power with his belief that Italians were better than the people that they ruled over, it started to create a situation where the Libyans were more and more oppressed to the point where um, there was a genocide, an attempted genocide of all Libyans, and most of the citizens of Libya were confined to 15 concentration camps starting in about 1931. And there were chemical attacks against the Bedouins of Libya. It got so far to the point that the Italian military was saying, look, we need to make sure that the Libyans understand they are inferior to us. We're just going to, if they have a rebellion, we're just going to put it down because that's what the superior Italians are going to do. So on the buildup in the early years, and to appease YouTube, we're going to uh, refer to a certain leader as the leader of Germany, just because YouTube hates his real name. So we're going to go with the leader of Germany. The leader of Germany, after he took power in the beginning, looked to Mussolini with great respect and what he'd been able to accomplish, how he took power. In fact, uh, the leader of Germany's original putsch was kind of based upon what Mussolini had done in Italy problem is it didn't work in Germany. So they started from a point of respect and a lot of the things that the leader of Germany did was reflected what Mussolini did when he took power. Creating jobs, building up the military, appeasing the people. And these two leaders met. And we'll get into where the rift starts in a couple of minutes. Back to you, Richard. Italian colony of Somaliland. Italian Somalia, as it was also known. Ital Italy had acquired this via treaties basically up until 1880. And in 1925, they acquired the area of Jubaland, which was south of Italian Somaliland. Now, the Sol Italian Somaliland's capital was at Mogadishu. Given, hit, uh, given Mussolini's penchant for wanting to take what was not his, there was only two places in Africa that were not colonies of European powers. One was Liberia, which was an American colony, but wasn't a colony anymore. It was actually a free country and the free country of Ethiopia. Ethiopia was doing its thing. It was trying to just 
exist. And it was doing a fairly good job of it. And then Mussolini decided that, well, it's not doesn't belong to anybody else. It's now going to belong to us. And in October of 1935, he sent his troops into Ethiopia. Now, it took a year and a half, but they did capture all of Ethiopia. The emperor of Ethiopia, Haile Selassie I, fled to England, where he lived until the end of World War II. But it was... Mussolini saying, well, nobody else has got this. I want it. And it would lead to, in World War II, what was known as the Africa Campaign, as Italy tried to go from Ethiopia out. And we will discuss that in the next video. But Ethiopia became a protectorate, a, a conquered land of Italy, and... They were as mistreated as everybody else under Italian boots. Now, one thing that uh, we should point out before we get too much further and go into where they cooperated, one of the earlier starts to the rift between the leader of Germany and Italy was, unbeknownst or beknownst to Mussolini, the backer of Ethiopia happened to be Germany which doesn't sit well when you invade somewhere they're backing. Now, moving forward, the other place where they became uh, partners was when a little idiot named Franco decided that he wanted Spain, and uh, they decided that they were going to help him do this. The problem was, is over this battle to gain Spain, the weaknesses of the Italian military really started to show. A lot of Franco getting to power was more because Germany was backing him and less because the Italians were backing him. And the weaknesses started to really show and the leader of Germany started to lose more and more faith in Mussolini and the Italian military especially once they get into the African campaign. Then he really loses faith in them. But we'll get to that. We're not there just yet. So they both helped Franco be win the, the Spanish Civil War, which, of course, pisses off the French and pisses off the English. But so far, they have as far as Mussolini is concerned, a strong bond. More on that in a minute. Back to you, Richard. Mussolini found himself a firm believer in not only Italian superiority and Italians, Italy's right to take the world as the same Italian peoples did 2,000 years before that the world should revolve around Rome. But he also believed in demographics. And part of Mussolini's belief in the future of Europe was that Germany was in a place of power, Italy was in a place of power, France was on its decline because of declining birth rates and that sort of thing. The number of people able to protect their country and perpetuate their country was going down and he had a very very poor opinion of England or Britain at that time because over a quarter of their population was over 50 the Italians and Germans were strong people they were young people they could take the world because their people demographically were better and Mussolini put a lot of faith in this. Mussolini believed that France was a weak and old nation as the French weekly death rate exceeded the birth rate by 2,000. And he had no interest in aligning himself with a country that was losing more people than they were gaining. So we fast forward a little bit to May 22nd of 39. 
when the Pact of Steel becomes official, which is when we finally get the axes to the Allies. And that is Italy and Germany officially signing the pact that if Germany goes to war, so does Italy, and if Italy goes to war, so does Germany. Which you may remember started a little thing called World War One, because um, everybody had these little backroom deals where if you go to war, I go to war, um, and for the most part, people have tried to stay away from that up to this point. But now the battle lines are being drawn. Now the rift continues because just after the leader of Germany signs this pact with Mussolini, where Mussolini feels that he is on the same level as the leader of Germany. Well, the leader of Germany starts doing some things to piss off Mussolini. One, he starts taking land really quickly. The other thing that he starts to do that really affects the relationship between Mussolini and the leader of Germany is the leader of Germany decides to make a pact with someone else. And this person, in Mussolini's opinion, is not somebody you want to be dealing with. And it confronts him on two, two points. One, he was not at the table. He wasn't consulted. He wasn't even in the conversation. And second, he didn't find out about it till it was done and dealt with. And that is when the leader of Germany signed the pact and carved up Poland with Stalin. When he did that, it showed Mussolini, or should have shown Mussolini, except Mussolini was already in too, too deep, that he was never going to be considered on the same level as the leader of Germany. He was the leader of Germany's little brother. You come along if I say so. And that was the relationship that the son-in-law started to see and fear. Because slowly but surely, Italy was being pushed out of the big picture and being put around as second fiddle. Mussolini at this time was too blind to see it. He started to get inclinations of it. And he was getting more and more angry. But there really wasn't much he could do about it. Um, the Italian military was in no shape to go up against Germany if he decided to turn his back on uh, the leader of Germany. So he basically had to sit and take it. But the rift really starts with that pact with Stalin. But we'll cover what happens after this in the next video. I hope you'll join us. I hope that this has been informative. And I've been Robert Knowles. And I'm Richard Simpson. Thank you and good night. Richard and I would like to thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Until we meet again in another point in history. Have a good day.